Yeah, Dan Krasta here, and most of you, heck, pretty much everyone, have probably had or still have a PS4. Yep, this little bitch. And we all know how damn loud this bitch gets, like a freaking jet engine. Today we're tackling this issue head on, and there's only one way to fix it. Hasta la vista. And here's the shiny new i7 4090K and 4090Ti. That's pretty much all we wanted to say for today. This was Dan Cruster, BNB Team. Peace out. You gotta solve problems efficiently. Damn it. Well, fine. We'll still need this thing today. After all, today we're gonna slap some crazy tech shit. Ever since this console hit the shelves back in 2013, it spawned so many memes you could make a whole damn season of top memes just from them. And here's our test subject for today, the legendary PS4 Pro Edition. Sure, it's got plenty of rivals, but it still holds the crown for most units sold. Hell, I spent more hours with this thing than with my wife. Just don't tell her, alright? So why the hell is it so loud? Yeah, sure, some smartass will say change the thermal paste or vacuum the heatsink, but this bitch started roaring just a month after I bought it. And it's not just the trashy setup, it's trashy devs and optimization department. How the fuck is a $300 machine supposed to run modern AAAAAAAAAAA titles when even a no longer top tier RTX 3090 Ti costs twice as much? I'm asking you, huh? And this damn box keeps farting its lungs out, barely pushing a godforsaken 30 frames per second. Some smartass will say just buy a newer console. Bitch! No! Have you even seen the games they delivered? So, what can we test here? Well, let's measure how loud this dumbass console gets. Wanna see stock noise levels? Firing up the decibel meter? Alright, time to run some tests. Honestly, I just want a game. Man, playing shooters with a controller is so damn comfy. Mmm. Old kept arguing with me about this. This gamepad? Total OP bullshit. Anyway, we got 3.5 meters per second airflow and 70 decibels at 1 meter distance. Basically textbook perfect. Oh, and its exhaust vent is facing the wrong damn way. So now we're gonna try and tweak the results to make it quieter while keeping proper cooling. First method, old good orcish style. Before any orcish craft, our test subject needs to be taken apart. Sometimes even completely wrecked, but not today. So while the crew is busy disassembling the console and doing a damn fine job at it, let's cover some basics. The whole point of any heatsink is to transfer and dissipate heat. In our case, we need to pull heat away from the CPU lid and spread it across the entire heatsink surface. And the bigger that surface area is, the faster the heat dissipates. That's exactly why most heatsinks look like cheese graters with tons of thin metal fins. More fins means more surface area, means more air contact, means better cooling. Simple math. But even this wouldn't be enough for our PS4. With a basic heatsink like that, it would melt in minutes. We need upgrades. But how to push heat out faster without turning the entire console into one giant radiator? If you've ever built a PC or cracked open a relatively modern console, you've probably noticed some pipes running through the heatsink. All nicely bent, not like the janky plumbing in your apartment building. And in laptops? The whole cooler sits miles away from the CPU, connected by this flattened piss pipe of a heat tube. What's even the point? Who designed this crap? These aren't just pipes. They're precision engineered heat conductors. Inside, there's coolant flowing through a crazy porous inner surface. Basically, the liquid evaporates near the CPU hotspot, then condenses back at the cooler radiator fins. Rinse and repeat. It's a self-contained cooling cycle. They help the coolant flow through the pipe, wicking it like a lighter's fuel soaked up by the cotton. Hope you got at least some of that, because our first heatsink prototypes will use this exact tech. We're basically copying a standard PC cooler design, simple and straightforward. Step 1. Pull heat from the CPU. So we're snipping some spare copper, left over from our last Cthulhu cast project, to prep the base for, well, let's call it creative engineering. We're gonna MacGyver our own heat pipes using whatever junk we find in the garage. Quick, cheap, and gloriously janky. Now we're not expecting miracle performance. Proper engineering requires actual calculations. But screw it, we're flying by the seat of our pants to hit that sweet spot between cooling and chaos. Obviously we need to keep material to a minimum, so we're cutting away everything unnecessary and prepping the base for our pipes. 
The best thing we had lying around? Copper brake lines. So we cut, roll, and solder them into the block. Maybe not ideal, but hey, it actually turned out decent. Solder filled all the gaps, so heat transfers should work. For coolant, we're rolling with acetone. Why? It evaporates crazy fast at room temp. Good enough for our ghetto rig. For the capillary effect, we'll just use a wick. Same principle. Hot acetone evaporates at the bottom, the vapor condenses up top, gets soaked by the wick, and drips back down. Will it actually work? Hell if I know. We gotta seal this thing tight, or the acetone will bail before the PS4 even boots. To expand surface area, we'll just wrap a shitload of wire around it. Yeah, it's not pretty like proper milled fins, but we work with what we've got. Tried soldering for better contact, but fucked it up royally a few times and said, screw it. Quantity over quality, baby. Ended up looking even jankier, like some kind of post-apocalyptic radiator. Ready to test this abomination? Alright, firing it up! As you can see, this beauty is now rocking a full ziggurat on the CPU, slathered in thermal paste. Didn't make the cut for the video, but trust me, it's there. Whoops, button just popped off. Holy shit! It's alive! Look at that! Powering up the PS4, firing up the TV, will it work? Ooh, there we go, it's alive! Working like a charm, check it out. <laughs> what if we make it entirely passively cooled? Keep Sony's design, but ditch the fan. Maybe it doesn't even need active cooling, just let the CPU yeet heat into the air like it's no big deal. Here's a thought, what if we blast pre-chilled air straight at the chip? We've got superheated steam, why not super cooled air? We're also filming this whole thing with a thermal cam to see exactly how the heat's moving. All right, let's roll. Well, the door. Die, damn it! Wait, it's still working? Bomb! Damn, this is actually fascinating. Why did I think it'd croak immediately? What's the temp reading? Oh, you sneaky little bitch. Now I get it. 70 degrees on the outer surface of our copper monstrosity here. Thermal gun claims 45 degrees, which means the core is probably hitting over 90 degrees. Damn it! We were so close! Got my hopes up and everything. All right, let's peel this off and torch it properly. See how the heat spreads. Okay, yeah, bottom's definitely toasty. And up top. Oh, hey, the top's toasty too, but this spot, barely warm. We're gonna crank the heat now and watch the thermal spread. Now I know actual temps are way lower than this demo, like 80 degrees celsius tops, maybe 100 degrees on the actual chip, which FYI is the please god knows own where it starts wheezing. Let's hold it for a minute. And there. This spot's lukewarm, but here, holy hell scorching. And this side, zero heat spread, totally dead. And this garbage isn't even working. Fuck! Though honestly, what did we expect from this orcish style device? Let's call it the Eye of Sauron Ziggurat Edition. Certainly! Turns out, there's a reason heat sinks use black magic math. Even this tiny bastard! If it had a jet engine fan, of course, able to outperform our monstrosity. Maybe that was the key initially? Who knows, everything is possible. But today is not about fixing, it's about reinventing the whole solution itself. On to experiment number two. For this method, we're reviving some old school car cooling tech. Why the hell it fell out of fashion? No fucking clue. Meet our Lada 2108 radiator, we'll be pumping water from this tank through it. The whole rig goes inside a fridge, perfect for folks with spare Soviet era parts and a spare appliance. Oh, and don't forget the pump motor, unless you enjoy stagnant coolant soup. That's pretty much it. Toss all that lame food out. PS4 adept should have pizza only diet. We're gonna cram this whole setup up inside like a redneck engineering masterpiece. In goes the radiator. It'll live its best life in there. Now how do we boost airflow? Bingo! Grab a fan! One more thing I almost forgot. That's how this glorious abomination is supposed to work. Will it actually work? Let's find out. Ugh! Had to dig everything out just to film this. Anyway, we don't need this part here. The whole point of this ridiculous setup, we can run all these tubes to another room, banish the jet engine noise so we can actually hear the game. That said, meet our two thermometers. One monitors our ghetto fridge chamber's temp, 
Our second thermometer shows the coolant temp after it passes the chip. And I use that term loosely. Your damn smartphone has stronger chip these days. I mean, look at this pathetic setup. Where are the real power? Where are the massive lamp components that actually deliver performance? Gone. As you can see, this aluminum block here will be doing the actual heat transfer. It's really cold now and already nice and chilly. Now we're gonna hook this bad boy up to the rock. I'm gonna fiddle it with my tentacles there. For a bit. So I may have taken a quick vacation to Alaska. You know, just to scare some moose. Feed the ticks. Ah, paradise. Oh shit, am I busted? Doesn't matter, I'm already gone. All right, moment of truth. HDMI plugged. Power connected. Fingers crossed this doesn't immediately explode. And hit the power button. Oh, holy shit, the Christmas lights are finally worked. Now watch as I magically poke the HDMI with my invisible remote. Boom, it's alive, 14 degrees. Who ordered a fridge water block upgrade? You got it! Today we're stress testing this rig on Doom Eternal and Red Dead 2. The games that normally make my PS4 sound like a jet engine. Temps holding at 14 degrees. Though let's be real, between the 400 watt fridge, 100 watt pump, and 300 watt fan, we're basically running a kilowatt cooling system. Ghetto? Absolutely. But unlike our first janky radiator attempt, this abomination hasn't crashed yet. 40.1, 14.2, a whole 0.2 degrees increase. Though this dumb sensor's margin of error is twice that. Whatever, let's roll. Dude, 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 dude. What's it now? 14.3? Basically frozen in time. Normally we'd be sweating at 85, maybe even pushing 90. But this? This is run benchmarks and chill territory. Get robot claws out of here! Side note, I actually played this Doom only in VR. Booted it up once, instantly puked from the teleporting. Felt like my soul left my body. The shoulder cam gameplay even comfier. Temps creeping up! 14.5 degrees now. Still, this rig's running smoother than a Swiss watch. For now, at least. Pro tip, fridge tubing works. But honestly, just, just dunk the whole damn console in your bathtub. Problem solved. Good for about five hours, till the water gets warm. Only thing making noise now is the bare HDD spinning. No case to muffle it. Not even sure how to measure volume properly here. So we're reading 45 decibels, and that's with all this gurgling nonsense going on. For context, 45 decibels is like a whispered conversation, 35 decibels is a wall clock ticking, and fuck those things, seriously. Who still sleeps with analog clocks going sk, 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 like some grim life countdown? -er? Anyway, we've slashed noise by 25 fucking decibels, that's a win! Zero detectable airflow turbulence, hooray! It works. It works. On to the next experiment. Given how well that last disaster worked, we're going full scorched earth. Slapping a luxury PC water block on this PS4 and reassembling it like we didn't just commit war crimes against thermodynamics. What could possibly go wrong? We're upgrading the device from previous experiment. Meet the coldest fridge in our arsenal. Oh yes, you beautiful bitch. It's an air conditioner. Runs on a heat pump principle. Freon evaporates and condenses in cycles, stealing heat from one place and dumping it elsewhere. Not all AC units can both heat and cool, but the physics stays the same. We only need cooling and this dinosaur gets the job done. We're repurposing the AC's cold radiator, aka evaporator, to chill our upgraded PS4 liquid cooling loop. All we need is to build a ghetto thermal aquarium. Toss the radiator in and we're ready to rock. Now this abomination actually looks like a proper solution. We've basically built an industrial chiller. Just assembled from scrap parts and whatever the hell we could find. Gutted an old AC unit, flipped its guts inside out to chill water instead of air. And now it'll pump that sweet coolant through these fat tubes straight to a real deal PC water block. Yeah, this bastard will cool our PS4 like a dream. Bonus? You can mount this eyesore right on your damn wall. Just mount it outside like a normal AC unit. Zero noise inside your place. Now let's peek inside. And oh glorious day. 
We've got what looks like ramen broth in there. Those frost-covered tubes? That's our ticket to Sub-Zero Temp. We could easily hit minus 10 degrees Celsius and still have headroom to spare. Talk about overkill cooling. The only change we made to the PS4 was adding this water block. Fits like it was made for it. By the way, you can grab one yourself for just two grand. Salvage from some old GPU. Can't believe Sony don't deliver it from the box. I mean, AC unit casing, PS4 with a water block. Genius, right? And check out how perfectly everything goes back together. Look at this clean final build. Huh? Two clean holes! Now we pop these tubes in. Snick. And the second one. Snick. Alright, time to fire up the coolant system. Hooked it up! Got the power cord in my hand. Powering up the PS4. No juice. Wait. There we go. Finally booted. Check this out. A dead silent, I mean fucking whisper quiet. Just some HDD, absolutely no noise. Except this little bastard screaming input. Input is... Input. There we... Wait, what the hell? It's quiet because it's not working. Weak or no signal. Goddamn. Much like my brain. Well, display shows minus 0.4 degrees Celsius. Good enough. Hoses are cold. Oh wait, look, it's working. We're now currently sitting at freaking minus 3.5 degrees. Honestly, that's overkill. Might get condensation here, which would wreck the hardware. Good thing we've got this smart thermostat. Special thermocouple that controls the compressor cycle. You can even calibrate it. All in all, I'd call this a damn successful build. Honestly, not even gonna bother with the decibel meter here. Let's just assume we're keeping that sweet 40 decibel baseline. Okay. Okay, just for science. Final numbers, same 45 to 46 decibels. Basically whisper quiet by my standards. Killer results. Impressive enough. Temps holding at minus two degrees. Same as outside right now. Holy shit. Debris alert, what the hell just flew off? You piece of junk. What kind of bullshit is this? Broken. Wait, wait. That's it. Streaming career starts now. Gaming in pajamas while gambling sponsors shower me with cash. What a life would it be. In short, it works. This is how a real engineer gets shit done when fed up with noise around. Anyway, this is Dan Cruster and BNB Team. Subscribe. Catch you later. Wait, what am I supposed to... What binds here? You still there? Video's over. Scoot, y'all. Controller's mine now.